So you just bought your brand new shiny 15 inch MacBook Air, but it already has scratches all around and doesn't hold any charge. Maybe you've been using it wrong this whole time. So I'm gonna tell you about small mistakes you make that can and will negatively impact your Mac and user experience. The first mistake you made, even before you opened the MacBook, you bought the wrong color. Yes, buying the MacBook in the wrong color is the most common mistake. It has been proven by many people that silver is the most basic, but durable color and that colors like space gray or midnight should be avoided. Why? Well, the laptop itself is made out of aluminum, which is light gray, and all the colors are just coating that can be scratched off. Silver MacBooks are less prone to that issue simply because that silver color and the natural color of aluminum are so similar. However, if you buy a space gray or midnight MacBook, get ready to see scratches everywhere, mostly around pores, because these colors will show everything, every little scratch and scuff mark, and that midnight color, it's just a fingerprint magnet. Do you want your MacBook to look like this the next minute you unwrap the computer? I think not. So if you want your Mac to maintain its visual perfection for as long as possible, get it in silver. But if you already made the mistake of buying the wrong color, make sure to at least buy a transparent skin for your MacBook. These skins can be found on AliExpress or from companies like dbrand for relatively low prices, but they will protect your laptop from scratches and smudges. And if you're planning on sticker bombing your Mac, the skin is a must have because stickers often leave residue on the metal and can even leave per permanent marks after removal due to uneven exposure to sun. Another huge mistake is cases and silicone protectors for the keyboard. But Arthur, why? Well, the plastic protectors damage the MacBook more than they protect it, mainly because of all the dust and debris that gets in between the case and the laptop. This dust then creates micro scratches, which severely decreases the visual perfection you hope to get. And the keyboard protectors, well, these are just evil, pure evil. The biggest problem with that is the damage to the display they cause. After prolonged use and having your MacBook closed, these rubber protectors can scratch the display and leave marks. Do you want your display to get scratched and abused? Go ahead, install the keyboard protector. Also, there is a second problem with those protectors. Dirt can accumulate under the protector, potentially jamming the keys, causing them to malfunction. And what's more, in some cases, the water might condense under the protector, causing the key mechanism to rust and deteriorate. Think twice before installing any protectors on your keyboard. But okay, let's say you have avoided all these missteps. There's one that you possibly make regardless of how careful you are, and it has to do with your battery. That's where most people go wrong. One common mistake is letting the battery drain completely before recharging it. This can make the battery lose overall capacity over time and not hold a charge as well. It can also permanently damage the battery's chemical compounds. Don't believe those experts from Reddit. The modern batteries don't need to be fully discharged. It's better to keep the charge level between 20 and 80% for the best performance. Another mistake is leaving the MacBook plugged in and charging for too long. Overcharging the battery can make it degrade faster and even cause overheating, which can seriously harm the inside of the MacBook. However, it's okay to keep your MacBook connected to power for a few extra hours after it's fully charged because it stops heating up once the battery reaches 100%. Just don't do it too often because the battery should go through its natural cycles of going down and back up again, keeping it at the same 100% level for a long time isn't a good idea. Another thing that can damage the battery is exposing it to extreme temperatures, like leaving the MacBook in a hot car, or direct sunlight, or storing it in a cold place. This can make the battery perform worse and can even cause leaks or a fire hazard, although that's rare. Also, avoid using charging cables or adapters that aren't approved by Apple. I know it can be overwhelming, but don't worry, by being aware of these potential problems and taking steps to avoid them, you can keep your MacBook's battery in good shape. Just be careful with how you use it and don't push the battery too hard each time. Now let's take a pause and talk about this video sponsor, Wondershare. Have you ever noticed that some of your files are gone, that you accidentally deleted them, there is no going back? Well, for me, it happened many times. A few times, 
while shooting videos, I just wiped the SD cards clean instead of copying the data. At that time, I had to reshoot everything, but with Recover It, I can just click a few buttons and turn back time in my files. Wondershare Recover It is an app designed to help you retrieve lost or deleted files. Recover It supports the recovery of over 1,000 file formats across different file systems and can retrieve data from a wide range of storage devices, including computers, hard drives, flash drives, cameras, and SD cards. What amazed me is that this app can easily recover 4K or even 8K videos, which are the most difficult types of videos in terms of recovery. It also offers a tool called Corrupted Video Repair to fix corrupted video files, providing quick and advanced repair modes. In the event of system crashes, Recovered helps rescue data by creating a bootable USB drive or copying and restoring deleted data from crashed PCs. And the latest update has brought a few more cool features such as Time Machine data scan, recovering deleted videos from dash cams and surveillance systems, and optimized raw scanning to recover data from raw hard drives. For me, Wondershare Recovered is a must-have, and I'm sure for you it will be a game changer right when you need it. The link is in the description and you know what to do. Another charging related mistake has to do with the charging brick. This one will be more relevant to those of you who use unoriginal chargers, but I will still tell you about one problem that even users of original chargers may encounter. For example, new MacBooks offer multiple chargers to choose from. From a slower 1 430 watt charger to a 2 435 watt charger, and even a fast charging 70 watt power brick. And this last one carries with it many benefits, but also one problem. Fast charging. Fast charging is a blessing and a curse. If your Mac is always charging fast, there is more strain put in your battery's chemicals. And this is not good either. The slower you charge your battery, the better. To completely avoid this issue, you can use your old iPhone's 5 watt or iPad's 12 watt charger. Apple Silicon Macs function just fine even with these slow chargers. And a few more words about chargers for those of you who charge their Macs wherever they can or use third party adapters. Third party adapters can be as as good as Apple made, but you really have to pay attention which charger you're using, because uncertified adapters can have a significant impact on your MacBook's battery performance. Uncertified adapters can provide incorrect power levels, either too much or too little, which can lead to faster battery degradation or potential damage. It's always recommended to use official Apple adapters or adapters that have been certified by Apple. This ensures that your MacBook charges safely and efficiently. And while we are in the topic of cheap and uncertified, use be hopes. With new MacBooks, you can't simply live without one, right? But good ones are expensive. And you only need them like a couple of times a month for USB drives or occasional display connection. Why pay more? Well, if you're planning on buying a cheap hub with charge pass-through, be careful what you pay for. Inexpensive hubs often lack proper safety considerations. These hubs can put unnecessary strain on your battery and MacBook, or they may even interfere with the power currents transmitted by your adapter, especially if the hub supports pass-through charging. To ensure optimal performance and safety, it's better to invest in certified USB hubs from Apple or their authorized partners, especially given the fact that such hubs are not that much more expensive. Another potential hazard for your MacBook is installing apps from unsigned developers. While it may be tempting to try out new applications, especially if they are not available on the official App Store, it's important to be cautious. Apps from unsigned developers have not undergone the rigorous verification process that ensures their safety. These apps can pose various risks, such as containing malware or malicious code that can compromise your MacBook security or even damage your data. To protect your MacBook, it's better to stick to apps from trusted sources, such as the App Store, which maintains strict quality standards and security measures to safeguard your device and personal information. Neglecting to turn off your MacBook is another habit that can potentially lead to damage. While MacBooks are designed for continuous usage, leaving them powered on indefinitely can have adverse effects. Firstly, it can strain the battery as it remains in constant use, gradually depleting its overall lifespan. Continuous usage without rest can cause the battery's capacity to diminish over time, resulting in shorter battery life and decreased 
performance. Also, keeping your MacBook running without regular shutdowns denies the system the opportunity to perform essential updates and maintenance tasks. macOS updates often require restarting the device to properly implement changes and ensure optimal functionality. By depriving your MacBook of necessary restarts, you may miss out on critical bug fixes, security patches, and performance enhancements that could improve the overall user experience and protect your device from dangers. To maintain the health of your MacBook and mitigate these risks, it's better to power it down regularly, especially during periods of inactivity or when not in use for an extended period of time. I, for example, power off my Mac every night for this exact reason. This allows the battery to rest and the system to install updates and do maintenance tasks. Remember, giving your MacBook periodic breaks by turning it off is a simple yet effective way to preserve its well-being and extend its lifespan. If you are careful and pay attention, you can keep your Mac running smoothly for many years. Take good care of your battery, avoid unregistered or uncertified accessories, and remember to give your Mac regular rest by turning it off. If you found this video helpful, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave your comments. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and see you in the next one.